Good afternoon, everyone. It's Sunday, June 21st, and it's a hot, sunny day on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And today, I'm going to show you how to grow as many fruit trees as possible in a small space by espaliering my fig trees. In front of me, I have six fig trees that I planted in ground back on March 29th of this year. A mere 84 days ago, these were dormant, single-stemmed sticks that were cut down to 18 inches in height. I'll make sure to link to the planting video above so you can take a look for more details, but they had no branches on them at all. And right here, you can see where I headed my fig trees at 18 inches. This is where I decapitated them right here. And then all of these branches, one, two, three, they all uh, leafed out in each direction where the tree was headed and I headed them as a single stem at 18 inches for a reason. I wanted to encourage them to branch out in all directions at the point of the cut, and as you can see, that worked brilliantly. I've had many viewers ask me how close my fig trees are planted. They are planted six feet apart. Fig trees can grow to be very large and very vigorous, so this is extremely aggressive spacing. In commercial applications in orchards, trees are usually planted 20 to 25 feet apart to give the trees plenty of room to grow, as well as allow room for equipment like trucks and big grass mowers to get in between them, but this is not a commercial application. I'm planting my fig trees for fruit in my backyard, so I'm trying to grow my trees as high density as possible so I can have as many varieties of figs as well as as many types of fruit trees as possible in my small space backyard. In order to achieve the highest density fruit production possible, I will be espaliering my fig trees. What is espalier? Espalier is a method of growing a fruit tree up against a wall and training it to grow across a framework of lattice, stakes, or wires. As the fruit tree grows, you will be tying its limbs down to supports in order to shape the tree over time. With this aggressive six foot spacing, if I let my fig trees grow wild, they will crowd each other, grow into each other, and it'll be impossible to tell each tree apart because they'll get so dense. So this method of training your trees will take some work on your behalf, at least in the beginning. It will also require annual hard pruning the tree back to its cordons. It's certainly more work on our end than just letting the trees run wild and do their thing, but this is how you can grow as many fruit trees as possible in your small space. Before I go into detail, all the equipment I'm about to describe and show you can be found linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description under trellising supplies, except for the U-Posts, which you can buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, Tractor Supply, or any other big box stores for a few dollars each. The U-Posts I am using are six-foot posts. At the midpoint between each fig tree, I will be placing a U-post. Each U-post will have cup hooks screwed into them at approximately 20 inches in height and 40 inches in height. That's 51 centimeters and 102 centimeters to our international viewers. These cup hooks will support a piece of 1 8 inch stainless steel airplane cable, which is the equivalent of 0.32 centimeters in diameter. I will use thimbles and clamps to create loops at the end of the steel airplane cable and then use turnbuckles to tighten the cables and create high tension. This will all be clear later in the video. It will take me three seasons to achieve my desired fig form. Season one was last year. During season one, I rooted the cuttings and grew the initial fig trees in containers. Then I cut each back into an 18 inch tall single stem during the winter. Season two involved transplanting the single stem trees into the ground and encouraging branching. That's this year. I need at least three branches to achieve my desired shape. Branches one and two will grow laterally to the sides and be trained against the lowest airplane cable. These will form the first horizontal cordons. Cordons are the main horizontal branches of the espalier form that are parallel to the ground. If you've ever seen how grapevines typically grow at wineries, almost like arms held out horizontally, those are cordons. Branch 3 will grow up vertically, and I will support it to be as straight as possible. At the end of the season, branch 3 will be headed at 36 inches above the ground. During season 3, the headed leader at 36 inches will send new growth in all directions, which we will train against the 40 inch high cable. This will be the second level of horizontal cordons. At this point next year, our espalier form will be complete. Every year, vertical growth will grow from the horizontal cordons, which will bear our main crop figs. Each winter, we will cut this vertical growth back down to the cordons, and the process will repeat itself the next summer. 
It's important to note that I am keeping my cordons low at 20 inches and 40 inches to prevent my trees from getting too tall. I don't want to have to bring out a ladder to harvest my fruits. That's the basic plan. Now I'll show you how I'm laying out my trellising infrastructure for the espalier form. So right here you'll see I pounded a tall stake into the ground and I put a nail at exactly 18 inches. And at that, that nail at 18 inches I have a piece of string and that is the string line that I have pulled all the way across all of my fig trees. And that 18 inch string line is going to be my guide for the airplane cable that I'm going to mount slightly above it at 20 inches. And the reason why it is so important to pull this string line is because I want to be able to pound the U-posts into the ground in a straight line. So my first U-post is going to go roughly in between the stake and the edge of this fig tree, and the face of the U-post is going to touch the face of that string. And that's the whole point of this string line right here. It's to make sure I evenly put the U-posts exactly where they need to go. All right, I have all of my U-posts installed and hammered in. And the U-posts are spaced exactly six feet apart from each other, and they split dead center in between the fig trees. And the posts all the way on the left and all the way on the right are three feet away from each of the bookmark fig trees. Uh, hammering the posts into the ground, you have to fully embed the bottom, so they have to go in at least probably 12 to 18 inches deep. So in order to get the bottom anchors in fully, uh, the pre-drilled holes dropped slightly below 20 inches as I planned. So those pre-drilled holes are going to be at 18 inches instead of 20. And that's close enough for my purposes. Then in each of these pre-drilled holes, I put in one of these cup hooks. And these are quarter inch threaded cup hooks. And on each side of these, I have a nut. And that is what fastens them into place and it locks them into position. So I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you them. So here is one of the U-posts on the end. This is going to be one of my bookend U-posts, if you will. So I have the cup hook installed parallel to the ground because this is where my turnbuckle is going to go. My turnbuckle is going to hook in like this, and this is going to be the start of my airplane cable that I'm going to pull across all of my trees to use as a support. And here you can clearly see that I am in between two different fig trees. So this right here is one of the intermediate U-posts. And this intermediate U-post has one of the cup hooks, and this is installed perpendicular to the ground. And the reason why is because the stainless steel cable is going to pass through like this and this hook needs to support the cable and prevent it from sagging. So gravity and the weight of the trees are going to pull the cable down. So I need this hook in this orientation and all of the intermediate posts to prevent the cable from sagging. Okay, now that we have all of the cup hooks installed on the U-posts, we're going to go ahead and we're going to run our aircraft cable. And here you can see the stainless steel eighth inch aircraft cable. And then over here I have the turnbuckles. Now it's very important that you begin this process with the turnbuckles fully extended and that's because we are going to install the airplane cable hand tight and it is going to be the tightening of the turnbuckles that is going to tighten the line and eliminate the slack. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take my airplane cable and I'm going to stick one of these clamps on just like this. I'm going to slide it down and then I'm going to put part of this cable over like this and I'm going to make a loop. And then I'm going to bend the cable around in a loop and I'm going to feed the other end through the other end of the clamp. And then after a little bit of wrestling you're able to get the loop on and it's all the way through so then I'm just going to take a simple pair of bolt cutters and I'm going to press that clamp on there. And then you can clearly see that that end is pressed on, probably pressed a little bit too hard in the center, but that's okay. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be really strong and that's all that we're really looking for. So then we're going to take one end of the turnbuckle, and we're going to place it inside that cup hook, and then we are going to run our stainless steel airplane cable to the other side of the trellis, and we're going to run it all the way to where the final cup hook is. Now that the airplane cable has been run, 
I've taken the spool and I've run it in front of all of the plants. And the reason why I did that is because I need the spool to be at least a foot or two longer than the true path. And that's because I need excess cable in there to loop it through all of the different cup hooks. So this is my end post right here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very sharp and very strong pair of hardened airplane cable cutters and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. Then I'm going to take that end and I'm going to run it through all of the cup hooks to the end of the trellis. Now the airplane cable is run and I have it hung right on this lip of the U-post. So now I'm going to clamp the end of this cable to one of my turnbuckles and I'm going to make it hand tight before I go ahead and tighten the clamp. And that is going to start with me placing the clamp over the aircraft cable. And I'm going to again go ahead and attach this turnbuckle like so. And then I'm going to feed the airplane cable through the other end of the clamp. So now that that is on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to place the turnbuckle in here and I'm going to pull this end through and make it hand tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this right in there. And that is exactly at hand tightness right now. And that's pretty much where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to check my line. I'm going to trace it all the way back down. And I'm going to ensure that that line is exactly where I want it to be. And that it is adequately passing through all of the cup hooks. And that it's nice and straight and it's roughly at the same height. And I'll verify that with a tape measure everywhere to make sure it's exactly 18, 19 inches off the ground like I had planned. So I went ahead with a tape measure and I checked pretty much everywhere in random spots along this line and I found that I'm in between 17 and 18 inches pretty much everywhere with a little bit of sag. And that's okay because I can only pull so tightly with my own two hands. Um, I'm going to require on the torque of the turnbuckle to mechanically tighten the line more. I'm going to go ahead and one more time give this just a little tug and pull all of the slack that I can out of that line and then I'm going to take my simple bolt cutters and I'm going to press this on. So now you can see that I pressed that clamp on with the bolt cutters and now this line is not going to go anywhere. It is on there as good as gold. So then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this turnbuckle and in order to in order to take the slack out of this line, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it in order to tighten it because as one human being, I can only pull this line so tightly, but using this mechanical advantage inside this turnbuckle by turning these screws, it allows me to use torque to my advantage. So I am able to pull this line much tighter than I ever could. So this is twisting the line up a little bit. So I want to go ahead and I want to check to make sure that I'm not pinching anything because I just pulled a solid two inches out of that line. You're probably also not able to fully depress both turnbuckles. So I want to be able to use both turnbuckles and uh, pull them simultaneously rather than put all the strain on one single turnbuckle. So I'm going to go ahead to the other one and do the same thing. And believe me when I tell you, there's quite a bit of tension in that line. It does not flicker back and forth very hard when I flick it. And I probably won't need to make this line too much tighter than this because there's just no need for it. And this is the mechanical advantage inherent to the turnbuckle system that I just absolutely love. And it's how you can make yourself a really strong trellis for espaliering trees. Now that we have our infrastructure in place, I want to show you how to tie down your fig trees. 
But first you need to know what the wood should look like before you go ahead and tie it down. Here you're going to see a shoot on this fig tree that is all fresh growth. And this shoot is very green. It's pure green, in fact. And this shoot is not adequate to be tied down yet. And the reason why is it has no lignification. If I start to bend this shoot, it runs a risk of snapping because it's very, very weak still. It's almost crunchy like a piece of celery and it will snap on you. It's just crisp like that. And because it hasn't begun the lignification process, it isn't as bendable as a more solid brown piece of wood is. This wood is what you want to see when you begin the tie down process. Here you can see this branch is still pretty thin. It's only about the thickness of a human finger. So it hasn't gotten too big to the point where it won't bend much anymore, but it's starting to lignify. It is starting to get a firm outer casing, but it's still very bendable. So at this point, you can easily bend and shape this wood, but it runs a much lower risk of snapping. And here you can see I tied it down all the way until the wood starts taking on that really green looking appearance. And at that point, I became much looser with my tie down because I don't want to get that brought down as close to the wire. And when I zoom out, you can clearly see how well this piece of wood is trained up against this cable. And it doesn't have to be 100% attached to the cable. You just have to get it close to the point where it's taking on the desired shape. The other thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you use an expandable vinyl tape like this. And this is what you want to use because it expands as the fig trees start to expand as well. So if I pull this, you see how it, it stretches and it stretches. So what will happen is if you don't use an expandable tape, since you're tying up the fig trees and holding them down, they will grow into the fig trees and they will cut into the circulatory system of the tree. You need to use a tie that expands alongside of the tree as the diameter of the caliper of the trunk grows. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to go about tying down this piece of wood. Now this Smith fig tree, I've kind of let it go to the point where it's uh, almost too big to tie down. So this is really the limit as to what you want to tie down. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a nice lengthy piece of expandable tape and I'm going to wrap it around the trunk and I'm going to wrap it in such a way that it's completely flat with no twists in it. And it's important to not have twists in it because I don't want it to constrict as the, uh, the trunk expands. And then I'm going to pull both ends down and make sure that they're both symmetrical. They need to be about the same length. And I'm going to take one and I'm going to wrap it around the support cable. And I'm going to take the other one and wrap it around the support cable loosely. Then I'm going to grab both ends with one hand. I'm going to push the branch down while simultaneously pulling on the ends and that is going to hold it in place and then I'm going to go around here and I'm simply going to make a plain old double knot and that is going to start to hold the tree in place so then I'm going to take another piece of expandable tape and I'm going to go about a foot or more past where I was and I'm going to again wrap that around ensuring that there are no kinks in where it's wrapping so it's nice and smooth make sure both ends are symmetric and I'm going to pull the whole branch down uh, and I'm going to try and be careful not to injure any of these figs um, and I'm going to again wrap this piece uh, wrap both ends around the guy cable, the airplane cable, whatever you want to call it. And then once it's wrapped around, again, I'm going to push the branch down while pulling everything tight together. And then I'm going to place another double knot. And you'll see the tape is already starting to expand on me. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to tie down large gaps of the tree and then I'm going to put intermediate supports once I, uh, once I get the ends tied down. So I'm going to tie the, the tip of this tree down. And now that the tip of the tree is tied down, like so, I'm going to come back with another piece of string. 
I'm going to add to the support right here. It's pretty important to note that this is not an exact science. I have five or six uh, main stems coming off of each of my trees. So what I'm doing is using simple observation. I'm selecting what I think are the most convenient branches to tie down to the supports. And I want to select the ones that are going to involve the least amount of bending of the tree as possible. So the uh, each branch remains as straight as possible. I don't want to put any unnecessary twists and turns into the branch because kinks in that branch could damage or it could constrict the internal vascular system of the tree. I want it to be as straight as possible so uh, the trees can uptake nutrients and water in as straight of a line as possible with as few twists and turns. Just like a hose, if there's kinks in it, it may not flow as well if, if you think of this tree as an uptake highway for nutrients to get to the top of the tree. Now you'll also notice that I drove a bamboo stake into the ground and I'm going to use that bamboo stake to hold what will be the main trunk in place because I want to select the main trunk so I can make it into a double cordon system next year. And what I did was I took a bamboo stake and I drove it into the ground. And the reason why I like using these bamboo stakes is because you can drive them into the ground and create very little damage to the root system because they're so thin. And then I have it tied onto the support cable to hold it into place. But as you, as you can see here, it's leaning forward and that's to be expected. So I also drove a four foot stake into the ground several feet behind the tree. That way it won't drive through the root system. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tie this bamboo stake. I'm going to pull it back to the wood stake in the back to use for support. So right here, I'm going to take my tree and I'm going to tie the center stem, which will be the trunk, up to this bamboo stake. And that's going to hold it in place so it'll be pretty straight. And I'm going to use two ties to do that. I'm going to use one down low and one up high. And now that that has been done, the whole tree is leaning forward too much. So I'm going to take a simple piece of butcher's twine and I'm going to wrap that around the wood stake. Uh, I'm going to wrap that around the bamboo stake, rather. And I'm going to get it so it's pretty symmetrical. And then I'm going to pull the bamboo stake back to the wood stake that I drove into the ground. And I'm going to loop that around and I'm going to tie this in place. And that tension is going to keep that bamboo stake nice and straight. And this way I will be able to train this fig tree as it grows so the center leader will grow up nice and straight. And again, uh, I'm going to run another cable at roughly 36 to 40 inches, so it'll probably be around here because eventually I'm going to decapitate uh, the the center stem right about here so it grows out in each direction and I will have more leaders like a, a whole nother level of the leaders that come out horizontally to the ground. And here is the final product of all the fig trees tied down. You can see what it looks like along the airplane cable and overall I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out. The branches were pretty easy to all tie down appropriately at this point. But the one thing that you will notice is that I am requiring that these branches, that they grow very strongly. So this branch right here is pretty much completely grown out and where I need them to be. Uh, but this branch right here is not where I need it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my fig trees go for probably another two weeks. And then on the 4th of July holiday weekend, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pinch off the tips of all of the branches that I don't want to grow. So this branch here that I do want to grow, that tip is going to remain. But that little branch down there is going to get pinched off. This branch right here is going to get pinched off. The branch up top is going to stay because I want it to continue to grow. And I will probably wind up pinching the growth tip of this one off 
because it's already filled out completely. And the reason why I want that to happen is because I want my fig trees to prioritize the energy into the branches that I want structure out of. So again, I want structure out of that branch that's going to grow along that line. I want structure out of the branch that's going to grow up and I want the structure out of this branch. So all of these auxiliary branches are sucking the energy out of the other ones. So I want to stop the growth of the ones that I have no use for in forming the foundation of my tree and let this one specifically grow wild. So that'll keep its tip and then this will keep its tip because I need it to still grow up. All the rest are going to get pinched off so I could focus all of the energy into those two right there so they grow out completely. And then I want them to fully lignify because I want those structural branches to get nice hardwood on them so they will be protected against our frosts and freezes in the winter. And that right there is how you espalier fig trees into the first year's single cordon. And how many times you do this is going to depend on how many cordons you want on your fig trees. I want to grow two different cordons that will give me what I think to be uh, maximum fruiting branches while I'm still able to reach them without getting on a ladder. You can stop at one single cordon, and this is as far as you'll need to go. Or you could go to three cordons, four cordons, or more. Or you could grow your fig tree in any shape that you want. There are all kinds of patterns and shapes that you can train your fig tree in. So when it comes to espalier, only your imagination is the limiting factor. Everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about anything I use in my garden, or if you're curious about any of the supplies that I use to do this in the video, everything is in my Amazon storefront linked in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.